Welcome back to the show. May is speech and hearing month and there's a lot of different events and activities that have been happening right across Canada and of course right here in the national capital region. We're going to tell you about those and why intervention, early intervention is so important. We are joined by Chantal Keeley and Carla Di Geronimo. Welcome to the show. It's great to have you both Hello. here. Really appreciate it. Uh, Chantal, let's, let's start with you and talk about the importance of, of having an awareness month for, for the entire month of May. Early intervention is a big thing. We hear a lot about hearing, but when it comes to speech and language, how are the, those all connected? Well, they are all connected, and we like to designate the, the month of May to raise awareness, uh, not just of the importance of early identification and intervention, which is crucial, but also the importance of just being aware of what a communication disorder might look like, right. a hearing disorder, um, and then what do you do? If you suspect you have a problem, who do you go see? So we like to raise the awareness of the profession of audiology and speech language pathology. And, and speaking of which, uh, speaking of hearing and speaking, uh, I think we have a mic issue, so we're just going to give you another microphone okay. here so we can hear you <laughs> on the show today. Um, but let's get a little bit more into um, just the prevalence of either speech or hearing um, hearing impediments or impairments that people may have. How prevalent is is either condition here in Canada? Mm -hmm. Um, well, uh, there's a, an estimate that one in six Canadians mm -hmm. has a speech, language, or hearing disorder, which is quite a large number. Yeah, it's yeah. definitely a yeah. big number, and the reason that, that we have to raise awareness. Uh, as far as numbers go, one, one in six is big, but what sort of symptoms are we talking about when it comes to hearing loss? I mean, a lot of people might not even realize that they're suffering from some sort of hearing loss. I'll pass that to Shantel. Sure, okay. um, well, when it comes to hearing loss, there are the, the obvious uh, symptoms that are really important to be aware of. Um, when you're not being able to follow a conversation in the presence of background noise. I mean, that's a fairly common symptom. Um, also, if you're not able to hear clearly in, without the presence of background noise, right. that's certainly an indicator. If you have a consistent ringing in the ears, that could be a sign that there is some underlying auditory damage. Um, essentially, uh, even with babies, uh, there's an estimate that about three to five babies out of a thousand will be born with a significant hearing impairment. Oh, really? Um, yeah. So, so mm -hmm. sometimes there's no reason at all, but it, it is can be right from birth. Could be due to family history. So right. some uh, some risk factors there. If a baby was in uh, the NICU for any reason, mm -hmm. born prematurely, really low birth weight. Um, but uh, it's it's really important, especially in those first few years, to be uh, to have sort of your your awareness mm -hmm. uh, in, intact as a parent. Mm -hmm. And whenever you mm -hmm. suspect a problem, really follow your gut is what we we tell families, and go seek you know at least some advice from a speech language pathologist or audiologist if you have any concerns at all. And if you make that early intervention and um, get, get your child to an mm -hmm. audiologist right away, um, what impact does that have on their prognosis later on? That's a great question. Um, there's sort of the 136 rule where we want to test hearing before a month of age. Mm -hmm. uh, we want to have a full diagnosis made by three months of age if possible and in early intervention by six months of age. Mm -hmm. And for hearing loss, those children that are identified and in early intervention by six, month of six months of age um, are shown to have normal uh, language levels by the time they reach uh, school age, oh, okay. so they can go into a regular classroom with their hearing peers, and will be at uh, about the same level. Carla, mm -hmm. what about some some other speaking uh, and communication disorders out there? We we talked a little bit off the top about language and speech. Can you mm -hmm. just uh, uh, expand on that? Definitely. Um, well, we're talking about children right now, so clearly, if it's a child, uh, like you know, detecting a hearing problem, if your child is not speaking. Uh, say, you know, babbling, uh, speaking by age two. Um, if the sounds are not well pronounced, well articulated, uh, that's another sign. Um, you know, stringing a couple of words together um, to make a short sentence. So those are some of the first signs that uh, there may be a, a, a problem or that the child is not following instructions and maybe they're not understanding uh, the language properly. Same um, prognosis too with the early intervention when it comes to, to hearing loss, so we, we can sort of reverse some mm -hmm. of the, the issues that the child may have. Yes, definitely early intervention is the best and you know it has an impact on their 
uh, educational future, mm -hmm. their, mm -hmm. their social development, um, you know, every part of their academic performance. Um, right, and I mentioned off the top that um, Ottawa, right across Canada as well, you've had some events and activities that have gone on. Are there still some events and activities here in the community moving yes. forward that people can get involved with? Well, sure. We've reached out actually to all the children's hospitals in Canada okay. and provided uh, what we call a celebration box with things like these uh, helium balloons and a growth chart of all the speech language hearing milestones. Um, uh, so there's lots of events going on daily and some of the schools have been doing uh, an awareness day where all the children are wearing uh, the, the logo with the, the, our new little owl mascot yeah. and <laughs> some little tattoos and, and they're having a little bit of a chat on you know protecting your hearing and, and things like that. Excellent. Well, mm -hmm. thank you both for coming on today. Thank we really you. appreciate thank it, helping raise much. awareness. You can visit the websites that we brought up on screen as well to find out more information. Don't go away. We'll be back with more daytime right after this.